Well, that was fast. Uh, They're already trying to get Joe Rogan booted off of Spotify. The CEO had to defend transphobic Joe Rogan, says Vice Podcasts Online. Okay, they're talking about his podcast. Sure, fine. Basically, long story short, a bunch of employees called Joe a transphobe, a homophobe, a racist, misogynist, you know, every name in the book. And the CEO had to defend Joe. There's been a lot of concern about several episodes that have been removed from Spotify. Or I shouldn't say removed, that were never put up from the Joe Joe Rogan experience. And, you know, Joe says it's a licensing deal that it's not going to, Spotify can't change the content of his show. So then Spotify gets what they get. But the only issue I suppose is if Joe leaves YouTube and all other platforms, except for his clip channel, which I believe will be staying, and then Spotify decides not to host a podcast with Alex Jones, where does it go? Because it's an exclusive licensing arrangement, in which case they might not control the content, but you won't hear it. So uh, that's a problem. But this story is just another story in the incoming smears against Mr. Rogan because he dared to say he wanted to host, he wanted to moderate a debate between Trump and Biden. Hashtag Joe must show on Twitter, on Instagram, post it and include along with it. Joe Biden must join Donald Trump for a debate moderated by Joe Rogan. Hashtag Joe must show. I figured as soon as this happened, as soon as Donald Trump said he would do it, they needed to find an excuse. And here we go. They got it. Employees are saying, but Joe is all of these really bad things. So there you go. Biden's going to come out and be like, ah, you know, with respect to Rogan, I understand he's a big platform, but, you know, some of the things he's said. Let's read the story. Motherboard for Vice reports. And I just want to point out what has Vice become? Ugh, Vice. <laughs> you used to have a spine, it used to be edgy. Now it's conformist trash. I can't believe I used to work there. It makes me feel bad. They say, in a Spotify all-hands company meeting on Wednesday, Spotify CEO Daniel Eck defended keeping transphobic content from hugely popular podcaster Joe Rogan on the audio platform, who earlier this year signed an exclusive licensing deal with the company likely worth tens of millions of dollars. Some staff inside the company feel alienated by Spotify's hosting certain certain uh, Joe Rogan experience episodes according to copies of some of the questions presented to the meeting obtained by Motherboard. The news signals how Spotify, as it moves into the podcasting space beyond music, is facing content moderation decisions more commonly associated with social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter. Spotify has already removed JRE episodes with some right-wing figures, including Alex Jones and Gavin McInnes. Quote, in the case of Joe Rogan, A total of 10 meetings have been held with various groups and individuals to hear their respective concerns, X said, according to three sources. And some of them want Rogan removed because of things he said in the past. Three sources provided Motherboard with some of the questions submitted to the town hall meeting. Motherboard granted them anonymity as they weren't authorized to speak to the press about internal Spotify issues. Two of the questions submitted for the Q&A section of the meeting highlight some of the Spotify employees' concerns around Joe Rogan's content. One of the submitted questions was, quote, many, okay, all right, I'm I'm actually reading a quote here, bear with me. Many LGBTQAI plus slash ally Spotifiers feel unwelcome and alienated because of leadership's response in JRE conversations. What is your message to those employees? Another was, quote, Why has Spotify chosen to ignore Spectrum ERG's guidance about transphobic content in the JRE catalog, referring to a group of Spotify workers who focus on related issues? At the meeting, Eck also told employees not to leak to the media, noting, if we can't have open, confidential debates, we will have to move those discussions to closed doors. Here's another quote. Others have concerns specifically over a recent episode, Eck said. And Joe Rogan and, and, and the episode in question have been reviewed extensively. The fact that we aren't changing our position doesn't mean we aren't listening. It just means we made a different judgment call. The specific episode of the Joe Rogan experience Eck was referring to was from July, in which Rogan interviewed Abigail Schreier, author of the book Irreversible Damage, the transgender craze seducing our daughters. According to one of the sources, from the opening moments of that podcast, Schreier associates transgender youth with those with autism. Schreier and Rogan spend parts of the episode explaining that young people are being pressured into transitioning by YouTube and other media. Okay, let me stop right there. Are they wrong? 
I'm not saying they're right. I'm just asking, are they wrong or are you just offended by what they're saying? How about you challenge what they said and show uh, and and you do a show and, and put up your facts? Otherwise, what's the issue? You don't want people having open discussions. And that's one thing that Rogan even brings up in the podcast. I'm pretty sure that there are people trying to shut down any open discussion around the issue, and that will only make things worse. But let me get to the bigger point here. This could be a good thing. Joe Rogan is the most popular podcast in the world, period. When you look at the top 10 podcast charts, Joe Rogan typically has five of them, not just number one. But it's usually like number three, six, seven, four, you know, two. And then they're old episodes because people just love the Joe Rogan experience. This puts Spotify in a really difficult position. Spotify wants the biggest podcast and they want to host content people love. But their whiny baby employees are crying. Oh, no. Take them down. Who do you listen to, Spotify? What happens if your employees revolt? Would you prefer to get rid of the most popular podcast in the world from your platform, of which you've already removed several episodes? Some of the most popular, mind you, like the Alex Jones episode, you would choose to actually get rid of that stuff because some people complained. That to me is absolutely insane. You know for a fact when you look at the Rogan experience, this is what people like. So why would you get rid of it? People love the Alex Jones episode. It was hilarious. Joe, uh, Joe was goading Alex on. Alex was ranting and turning beet red and waving his arms up and down. And they were they were making him like pushing him. They were they were trying to make him go off. And people thought it was funny. It was entertainment. We can't have that, though, can we? Is that what 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 the gist of this is? Now, I got to wonder. I got to wonder. I'm gonna let you all in an industry secret and give some real industry advice. And I mean it. Perseverance is the key to success. No matter what you do, so long as you just keep doing it, eventually you will find some kind of success. I mean, I, you know, look, there's within reason. If you're if you're trying to find success in banging your head on the wall, you'll eventually just damage your brain. But if you do a thing like play music or podcast or skateboard, whatever things that I do, eventually, if you just stick with it, you will find some success. Not everybody does, but perseverance is the key to success. One of the other big important factors when it comes to content production on uh, social media is that consistency is important. And look, it, it's really just about doing more than others. So why I'm bringing this up is I, I'm curious as to see how this all plays out with Spotify and Joe. If they're removing some of his episodes already, and it's a licensing deal where the clips will be exclusively on Spotify, why, why should I assume there's a guarantee they will put up every episode Joe does? I mean, think about it. If they removed a bunch of episodes, what happens if Joe has Alex Jones on again? Spotify says, we won't air that. And then there's no episode of the JRE, you know, the Joe Rogan experience. And if people can't get this, there's a break in the consistency. I also have to, uh, uh, to mention the number one position on iTunes is a guarantee that you're getting access to iPhone users. This is something that has greatly benefited Joe and many other top podcasts like the New York Times. Now, of course, you have to have a good podcast in order to work. So what I see happening is probably 90 plus percent uh, of, of you know why the Joe Rogan experience succeeds is Joe Rogan, plain and simple. But he does receive a big bump by being number one. Because he's number one, when you open the iTunes app, you see Joe Rogan. And if you don't know anything about podcasts, you might click it. Now Joe's got a new fan. This gives him access to all of the Apple users. Of course, Joe's got word of mouth. He's been doing it for a decade. So his perseverance, his consistency, and now being on the top have created this position where he is the big, you know, the biggest podcast in the world. The reason I bring that up is by moving off of iTunes, he's going to lose that key advertising position, which is really valuable. Of course, people will still listen to the JRE experience and probably almost everybody will. But he's going to lose some advantage there, and someone else might start moving up in those positions, and this could cause potential displacement. There's also the fact that with episodes being removed, Joe may lose his consistency. So he'll lose the top spot. He'll lose potential consistency. I don't know if any of that, I don't, I don't know if that will actually happen. I mean, if Spotify ends up taking over because of Joe, that's the bet they're making, then it's going to greatly benefit everybody on Spotify today. Apple has the dominant position in podcasts. It's true. When I look at my stats in the podcast, it is dominated by, by iTunes. 
Spotify is in second place. With Joe moving over, it could actually push Spotify up to the number one position because all his fans are going to move over as well. In which case, who has more power, Joe or, or iTunes? I don't really know. My bigger concern is in all of this is they're going to try and find reasons to remove Rogan from, from the podcast or to hurt him in some way. I'm sure Joe's smart enough to have a contract, you know, a, a strong contract, so I don't think he has much to worry about. And uh, that being said, I mean, he got a fat paycheck from this deal. I'm sure the worst case scenario for Joe is that he's rich for the rest of his life and so are his kids. So what really does he have to complain about? But I guess for the rest of us, there's a fear. These people are already trying to take Joe Rogan down. They're already trying to get him removed. They're calling him all the names in the books. I'm not surprised by it, especially with this attempt to debate or to host a debate. Can they allow it? This may be a really good thing for us. This may be one of the most important things, and Joe, what Joe Rogan has done may have may have uh, saved, say uh, uh, the anti s like it may have ended the far left. Now, 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 hear me out. Let me just put it this way: Spotify is looking at one of the most difficult decisions they have to make, the SJWs or the most popular podcast in the world. They took a major bet, a major risk, dumping tons of money in Joe. They can't get rid of him. It's the most popular show in the world. But the SJWs are coming knocking and they want him gone. Who will win? I don't believe the SJWs can win this fight because at a certain point, look, money walks. I, I, yeah, and B, I'm sorry, money talks and BS walks. So they're going to have to say, sorry, goodbye, we're keeping it. And then the tide changes and everyone sees what Joe did may be the final nail in the coffin. I don't know for sure. We'll see who wins this one. In the end, it could just be a blip and some episodes get pulled and everything stays the same. I have no idea. But I think it's significant. We'll see who wins this fight. Next segment's coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all next time.